Je suis ici pour faire le point sur les barrages illégaux. We would like to provide an update on the legislation and blockades. Of course, we're going to start with the situation here in Canada. We're entering the third week of illegal blockades that have been disrupting the lives of too many Canadians. Here in our capital city, families and small businesses have been enduring illegal obstruction of their neighborhoods, occupying streets, harassing people, breaking the law. This is not a peaceful protest. At the borders in different parts of the country, the blockades are harming our economy and endangering public safety. Critical supply chains have been disrupted. This is hurting workers who rely on these jobs to feed their families. Yesterday, the Ambassador Bridge was reopened between Windsor and Detroit. Our team and I have been working with Ontario and the City of Windsor around the clock. I want to thank the officers on the ground, including the RCMP, who played an active role. We now have a responsibility to make sure that the bridge stays open. With each illegal blockade, local law enforcement agencies have been acting to keep the peace within their jurisdiction. Despite their best efforts, it is now clear that there are serious challenges to law enforcement's ability to effectively enforce the law. On Friday, Ontario invoked a state of emergency to respond to the blockades. This was the responsible and necessary thing to do. Today, to continue building on these efforts, the federal government is ready to use more tools at its disposal to get the situation fully under control. After discussing with cabinet and caucus, after consultation with premiers from all provinces and territories, after speaking with opposition leaders, the federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act to supplement provincial and territorial capacity to address the blockades and occupations. I want to be very clear. The scope of these measures will be time-limited, geographically targeted, as well as reasonable and proportionate to the threats they are meant to address. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all levels across the country. This is about keeping Canadians safe, protecting people's jobs, and restoring confidence in our institutions. Here's how the measures we're taking today will help get the situation under control. The police will be given more tools to restore order in places where public assemblies can constitute illegal and dangerous activities, such as blockades and occupations, as seen in Ottawa, the Ambassador Bridge, and elsewhere. These tools include strengthening their ability to impose fines or imprisonment. The government will designate, secure, and protect places and infrastructure that are critical to our economy and people's jobs, including border crossings and airports. We cannot and will not allow illegal and dangerous activities to continue. The Emergencies Act will also allow the government to make sure essential services are rendered, for example, in order to tow vehicles blocking roads. In addition, financial institutions will be authorized or directed to render essential services to help address the situation, including by regulating and prohibiting the use of property to fund or support illegal blockades. And finally, it will enable the RCMP to enforce municipal bylaws and provincial offenses where required. This is what the Emergencies Act does. Let me be equally clear about what it does not do. We're not using the Emergencies Act to call in the military. 
We're not suspending fundamental rights or overriding the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We are not limiting people's freedom of speech. We are not limiting freedom of peaceful assembly. We are not preventing people from exercising their right to protest legally. We are reinforcing the principles, values, and institutions that keep all Canadians free. Après des discussions avec le Conseil des ministres et le caucus, with Cabinet and Caucus, after consulting the premiers of all provinces and territories, and after speaking with the leaders of the opposition parties, the federal government has invoked the Emergency Measures Act to complete provincial and territorial powers in order to manage the illegal blockades and occupations. I want to be very clear. These measures will be limited in time and geographically targeted. They will be reasonable they will, and they will be proportional to the threats to Canada's security. The Emergency Measures Act will strengthen and support the work by the police. We are not using the Emergency Measures Act in order to deploy the military. We will not be suspending fundamental rights as articulated in the Charter, Charter of Rights and Freedom. We are not limiting the right to peacefully protest or assemble. What we want to do is protecting Canadians, protecting their jobs, and reinstating confidence in our institutions. It's not something that's been used ever, but it exists for a reason. Invoking the Emergencies Act is never the first thing a government should do, nor even the second. The Act is to be used sparingly and as a last resort. Right now, the situation requires additional tools not held by any other federal, provincial, or territorial law. Today, in these circumstances, it is now clear that responsible leadership requires us to do this. These measures must be and will be compliant with our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Indeed, the Emergencies Act was created in the late 80s to flow from and uphold the Charter. We'll always defend the rights of Canadians to peaceful assembly and to freedom of expression, but these blockades are illegal, and if you're still participating, the time to go home is now. On a separate track from the Emergencies Act, I want to reassure people that the Canadian Border Services Agency is already turning back non-Canadians trying to enter Canada to participate in blockades. And of course, while we get the situation under control, we'll continue to have Canadians' backs. I want to remind affected businesses that if you're facing revenue losses, support is available through our wage and rent subsidy programs. We know that downtown Ottawa businesses in particular have been hard hit by these illegal activities. In the coming days, we'll be launching specific support for those businesses. I know that everyone is tired of this pandemic. We're hearing your frustration with COVID and even with the temporary measures we had to put forward to keep people safe. I know people are frustrated. I hear it. You have a right to express that frustration and even your anger with the government or government policies. It's something we'll always defend in this free and democratic country. But blockading streets and critical infrastructure and depriving your neighbors of their freedoms is a totally different thing. It has to stop. Tout le monde est fatigué de la pandémie. Everyone is tired of the pandemic. There are other ways to express yourselves rather than participating in illegal activities and dangerous activities. As Mr. Duclos said last week, public health measures 
are constantly being reassessed. And we will continue to modify them according to science. In fact, we will be making some announcements on that t subject in the coming days. Today, I also want to speak briefly about our support for Ukraine. On Saturday, I spoke with President Zelensky to reaffirm Canada's steadfast support and to continue to do whatever we can to support Ukraine. Durant la fin de semaine, During the weekend, I also spoke to the, uh, Charles Michel, as well as Chancellor Schultz of Germany and President Gouda of Poland. Part of the collective G7 response to support Ukraine's economic resilience. Today, we're announcing that Canada will offer a loan of up to $500 million to the government of Ukraine. I want to thank Deputy Prime Minister Freeland for her leadership on this file and underline that this is in addition to the $120 million loan offered earlier in January. On top of financial support, Canada has already taken steps to help Ukraine defend itself, including with the extension of the training mission Operation Unifier. In light of the seriousness of the situation and following conversations with our Ukrainian partners, I've approved the provision of $7.8 million worth of lethal equipment and ammunition. This responds to Ukraine's specific request and is in addition to the non-lethal equipment we've already provided. The intent of this support from Canada and other partners is to deter further Russian aggression. En raison du sérieux de la situation, Given the seriousness of the situation, and after having closely studied the issue, I asked, uh, I, I told you can we would send them arms and munitions. So Canada is joining the United States, the UK, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, uh, Lithuania, the Netherlands, and Poland in sending arms. The goal of this support from Canada and our other partners are to, is to dissuade Russia from pursuing its aggression towards Ukraine. Confrontation with Russia. But the situation is intensifying rapidly and we are showing our resolve. It's important for Canadians and the world to know that Canada will continue supporting Ukraine and its independence, integrity, sovereignty, including its right to defend itself. Merci tout le monde. Thank you, everyone. I will now give the floor to the two Deputy Prime Minister Freeland. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Prime Minister. Hello, everyone. Across the, mon the, the, across the world, liberal democracies are being confronted with serious and repeated threats. Perhaps, we thought, perhaps, and we perhaps even hoped that Canada would be spared. For the last two and a half weeks, we have realized that this is not the case. This siege and these blockades are causing major damage to our economy and are harming our democratic institutions as well as Canada's reputation in the world. International confidence towards Canada as a good place to invest and do business has been shaken. Barricades are doing great damage to Canada's economy and to our reputation as a reliable trading partner. The blockade of the Ambassador Bridge has affected about $390 million in trade each day. This bridge supports 30% of all trade by road between Canada and the United States, our most important trading partner. In Coots, Alberta, about $48 million in daily trade has been affected by the blockades. In Emerson, Manitoba, about $73 million in daily trade 
has been affected by the blockades. These costs are real. They threaten businesses, big and small, and they threaten the livelihoods of Canadian workers, just as we are all working so hard to recover from the economic damage caused by COVID. Nous nous sommes battus bec et ongle. We fought so hard to protect Canada's privileged relationship with the United States during when we were negotiating NAFTA. We stood up to tariff 232, which were illegals and unjustified. We will never let those hard-won victories be tarnished. The world is watching us. Our jobs, our prosperity, and our livelihoods are in danger. That is why our government is acting. We are resolute and determined. These illegal blockades must be lifted. And they will be. As part of invoking the Emergencies Act, we are announcing the following immediate actions. First, we are broadening the scope of Canada's anti-money laundering and terrorist financing rules so that they cover crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use. These changes cover all forms of transactions, including digital assets, such as cryptocurrencies. The illegal blockades have highlighted the fact that crowdfunding platforms and some of the payment service providers they use are not fully captured under the Proceeds of Crime and Terrorist Financing Act. Our banks and financial institutions are already obligated to report to the Financial Transactions and Reports Analysis Centre of Canada, or FinTrack. As of today, all crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use must register with FinTrack and they must report large and suspicious transactions to FinTrack. This will help mitigate the risk that these platforms receive illicit funds, increase the quality and quantity of intelligence received by FinTrack, and make more information available to support investigations by law enforcement into these illegal blockades. We are making these changes because we know that these platforms are being used to support illegal blockades and illegal activity, which is damaging the Canadian economy. The government will also bring forward legislation to provide these authorities to FinTrack on a permanent basis. Second, the government is issuing an order with immediate effect under the Emergencies Act, authorizing Canadian financial institutions to temporarily cease providing financial services where the institution suspects that an account is being used to further the illegal blockades and occupations. This order covers both personal and corporate accounts. Third, we are directing Canadian financial institutions to review their relationships with anyone involved in the illegal blockades and report to the RCMP or CSIS. As of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order. In doing so, they will be protected against civil liability for actions taken in good faith. Federal government institutions will have a new broad authority to share relevant information with banks and other financial service providers to ensure that we can all work together to put a stop to the funding of these illegal blockades. This is about following the money. This is about stopping the financing of these illegal blockades. We are today serving notice. If your truck 
is being used in these illegal blockades, your corporate accounts will be frozen. The insurance on your vehicle will be suspended. Send your semi-trailers home. The Canadian economy needs them to be doing legitimate work, not to be illegally making us all poorer. Il s'agit de suivre l'argent. It's all about following the money. It's about putting an end to the funding of these illegal blockades. Consider yourselves warned. If your truck is used in these blockades, your corporate accounts will be frozen. The insurance on your vehicle will be suspended. Send your rigs home. The Canadian economy needs them to do legitimate work and not make us all poorer Ill illegally. We will be, we've enforced these, taken these measures after deep thought. I have discussed this with the heads of Canadian banks. I thank them for doing what is necessary to ensure laws are being complied with and that Canadian democracy is being protected as well as our economy. The past two years, we have trusted one another We've leaned on one another. What we are facing today is a threat to our democratic institutions, to our economy, and to peace, order, and good government in Canada. This is unacceptable. It cannot stand, and it will not stand. Thank you. And I'll now turn over the floor to my colleague, our Attorney General Minister of Justice, David Lametti. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you, Prime Minister, colleagues, Canadians. Good afternoon. Canada is a rule of law country. By declaring a public order emergency under the Emergencies Act, we are following the law and we are acting within it. There are clear conditions set out in the Emergencies Act in order for a public em order emergency to be declared. Our government believes that those conditions have been met. And that requires the Government of Canada to act. La loi sur les mesures d'urgence existe. The Emergency Measures Act has existed since 1988 and replaced the War Measures Act. It, it is different from the previous Act for in two important ways. First of all, the Emergencies Act has several ways of safeguarding uh, measures, including parliamentary review. Secondly, measures taken under this Act must comply and, re and observe the Canadian Ch Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Specific, serious circumstances that amount to a national emergency. For a situation to be qualified as a national emergency, three conditions must be met. First, we must be in a situation that either seriously endangers lives, health, or safety of Canadians and exceeds the capacity or authority of a province to deal with it, or seriously threatens the ability of the Government of Canada to preserve the sovereignty, security, and territorial integrity of Canada. Second, the province's and territory's capacity to handle the situation must be considered insufficient or must show gaps. And third, we must conclude that the situation cannot be handled adequately under any other Canadian law, including provincial laws and territorial laws. Once the emergency has been declared, the Emergencies Act allows the federal government to adopt r rules or, or decrees in order to uh, intervene. Our government respects Canadians' rights and freedoms as protected under the Charter. It is our intention to use only the necessary reasonable and measured powers in order to resolve this crisis quickly and safely. 
The Emergencies Act also contains a number of significant limits, checks and safeguards. As required by the Act earlier today, and on occasion over the past week, the Prime Minister and members of Cabinet have consulted with Premiers and members of their respective governments. Having now declared a public order emergency, we will table the declaration in Parliament as required within seven days. In the coming days, a parliamentary committee will be struck to provide oversight while the emergency is in effect. The declaration only lasts for 30 days unless renewed. However, we can and sincerely hope to revoke the emergency much sooner. Parliament also has the ability to revoke the declaration of the emergency as set out clearly in the Act. Once an emergency is declared, the Emergencies Act permits the federal government to make necessary orders or regulations to deal with the emergency. The Prime Minister gave the broad outline of these in his remarks. There are six specific measures we feel are needed to bring this situation under control. First, the regulation and prohibition of public assemblies that lead to a breach of peace and go beyond lawful protest. What we are seeing in Ottawa and what we, saw, what we are seeing at the Ambassador Bridge are not lawful protests. Second, designating and securing places where blockades are to be prohibited. This could include borders, approaches to borders, and other critical infrastructures, or Ottawa. Directing persons to render essential services to relieve impacts of blockades on Canada's economy. And this could include tow trucks and their drivers, for compensation, of course. Authorizing or directing financial institutions to render essential services to relieve the impact of blockades, including, as we have heard from the Deputy Prime Minister, regulating and prohibiting the use of property to fund or support the blockades. Measures enabling the RCMP to enforce municipal bylaws and provincial offences where required. And finally, the imposition of fines or imprisonment for a contravention of any more order or regulation made under Section 19 of the Emergencies Act. Les décrets règlements qui permettront de concrétiser les mesures seront... These measures that will allow us to move forward under the Act will soon be developed and tabled before Parliament in the two days following their implementation as, ex as required by law. Parliament has the power to revoke the emergency, which means that all measures taken will be reasonable and appropriate. I want to emphasize one point clearly. These measures are temporary. We intend to impose them for only as long as needed to restore order across the country. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Minister Lemery. The Prime Minister and Ministers will be taking 30 minutes of questions, starting in the foyer. Le Premier ministre et les ministres prendront 30 minutes de questions, en commençant avec les journalistes dans la salle, starting with David Turton from CBC. Hi, Prime Minister. A number of Premiers today have come out and said that they don't want or need the federal government to exercise its emergency powers in their provinces. So I'm just wondering, how do you respond to the Premiers who've come out today and said that? I thank the Premiers for having had the conversation with me this morning. It was extremely important to talk about what was happening right across the country. Uh, we have seen uh, challenges uh, across the country that are uh, linked to uh, what we are seeing uh, here in Ottawa, uh, what we're seeing at border crossings. But allow me to repeat what I said before. The measures brought in today are geographically specific and targeted only to where they are needed. These are not blanket powers across the country. These will be tools that can be used where and when necessary so that the police of jurisdiction dealing with blockades or occupations have the tools necessary and can draw on RCMP resources as necessary to keep Canadians safe, to restore confidence in the rule of law and in our institutions, and to make sure uh, that our economy continues to recover from the impacts of COVID-19 over the past two years. 
at least one other premier said that invoking this act is like putting oil on a raging fire, words along those lines. Do you think you're inflaming the situation even more by invoking this? My focus is on Canadians who've had a long two years, who've been through a pandemic, who've lost loved ones, who've seen businesses struggle, who've lost jobs, and just want this to be over. They're exhausted. We're all exhausted. We're all frustrated by the pandemic. But those people who disagree with the measures that governments put in place to keep Canadians safe, to ensure that we would make it through this pandemic better than many of our peer countries. Those people have gone from uh, protesting and disagreeing with those measures to limiting and blocking the freedoms of their fellow citizens, hurting jobs, hurting lives and livelihoods, endangering public safety and weakening our country, not just right now, but for times to come in the eyes of our most important trading partners. These illegal blockades are hurting Canadians and they need to stop. Every step of the way, we have been there to support the police of jurisdiction. We've been there with tools and resources to help end these blockades. But it is clear that there are more tools necessary. And that is why we are moving forward with time limited, geographically specific, extremely bounded measures and additional powers that will allow us to get through these blockades and occupations and get back to the business of rebuilding our lives and our country after this pandemic. Next question. Hello, Mr. Trudeau, this is Radio Canada. As we were saying, uh, obviously some cri certain criteria will have to be met, but certain premiers have already uh, spoken out against these measures. Would you be prepared to go forward in, uh, in, uh, to move forward in provinces who do not agree with the application of this act? Answer, in conversations uh, that we're having across the country, as well as with, uh, with premiers and as, uh, as well as with police services, we are working on managing various situations across the country. And those conversations will continue. The Emergencies Act is there to provide us with additional tools and provide additional tools to the police services that are on site in order to manage situations as they emerge. It's not automatically an intervention by the federal, by the federal police or a direct intervention by the federal government. We're here to provide more tools, including additional authorities to what, whichever police it has jurisdiction and is there. It's quite possible, and we even hope, that the tools we have provided to police services across the country will not have to be resorted to, certainly not for very long. Ideally, if these premiers who say that they have the situation in hand will continue to be able to do so. But on a national level, we have reached criteria forcing us to act, to provide more tools to those who maintain order in our country, to protect Cana all Canadians uh, across the country. Question. You're saying that it's necessary. It's been through. We're in the third week of the uh, of this these protests in Ottawa now. Why did you not do this two weeks ago? Don't you think that you failed in your leadership responsibilities in uh, moving forward on this earlier? Answer. Some people will say that we moved too quickly. Other people will say no. We should have acted weeks ago. The reality is this: the Emergencies Act is not something to take lightly. It's not the first thing you turn to, or nor the second, nor the third. 
We were there to provide additional resources from the very beginning to Ottawa's local police service and elsewhere. We were there to support them in the work that they were doing. And in the last few days, during meetings I had with ministers, with our partners, with officials, it became clear that we required additional tools. And those tools, limited, responsible, and reasonable, are what we will be using through the Emergencies Act. Next question. That the RCMP now have the ability to enforce provincial and municipal laws. Does that mean that they'll be the lead police force agency here in Ottawa? And when can we expect more police officers from the RCMP to work with the city of Ottawa? Because they've been asking for that for a substantial period of time. Um, as I said, the invocation of the Emergencies Act uh, gives more power to the police of jurisdiction. It does not make the RCMP automatically police of jurisdiction anywhere across the country. As we have been, we will ensure that the RCMP continues to work to support local police of jurisdiction, uh, and that's what we have been doing in Ottawa. But I think on this question, I'm happy to turn to Minister Mendicino, who can give uh, further, uh, further information on, uh, on the situation in Ottawa. Marco? Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Prime Minister. Um, it, from the very beginning of the uh, illegal blockades, the federal government has been working closely with um, local law enforcement uh, where they are the police of jurisdiction, including here in Ottawa. I would point out uh, that we've sent three um, install installments of reinforcements to ensure that, um, that Ottawa Police Service has uh, the support that they need. Um, but I think, as we've seen, uh, without question, there have been many, many challenges uh, on the ground to restoring public order on the streets, and one only has to look at the situation on Wellington Street over the past number of weekends. I think it's difficult to overstate the impact of those scenes, uh, the conduct uh, that, has, uh, that has unfolded by those who are participating in illegal blockades. Um, it is not just an inconvenience. Uh, it is not uh, simply a matter of um, a trivial uh, interruption. Uh, we've seen in intimidation, harassment, um, and expressions of hate. And at times, um, the scenes on the streets of Wellington have seemed um, completely lawless. And that is one of the reasons why uh, we've had to take um, the very careful and deliberate step of introducing the Emergency Emergencies Act today and the declaration and the specific uh, powers, which again, are very targeted, they're very proportionate, and they're time limited, so that there can be greater agility between the RCMP, who will work seamlessly with um, local law enforcement, including in, in Ottawa, uh, to, to restore order. Um, I would also say that while we have seen progress, for example, in Windsor, um, that we should not assume that that progress is linear. And that is one of the reasons why these uh, measures through the declaration are also necessary. We want to be certain that local law enforcement has uh, the, the, the concrete tools that they need. For example, tow trucks, which have been very hard to come by. Um, in addition to that, the kind of jersey barriers, which will assist uh, with, with crowd control, that will ensure that trade and traffic um, can move uh, very efficiently. Um, and in addition to that, uh, when it comes to um, the, the relationship between the RCMP and local law enforcement and provincial enforcement, um, the, the provision that is within the declaration will allow the RCMP uh, to be more efficiently um, uh, assigned to those areas to uphold the law, be they municipal laws, provincial laws, or indeed um, the, the designated zones which will be prohibited uh, from assembly because they may cause a breach of peace or may uh, interrupt our critical infrastructure through trade. So when you look at the suite of the measures that we put into place today, and we've certainly put a lot of thought into that, um, our view is that uh, they are necessary and they will assist us in dealing uh, with the illegal blockades and bringing them to a peaceful and expeditious resolution. As my follow-up, Mr. Trudeau, Mr. Mendocino just mentioned that when you look out on Wellington Street here, you see lawless scenes. Why do you have any faith that the Ottawa police, after three weeks now, is going to be able to turn things around and restore law and order in this area? Um, in regards to the Ottawa police, we have been working closely uh, 
not just uh, the RCMP, but uh, the OPP uh, to ensure that there is a coordinated approach on that. But uh, in terms of confidence in the police, I think uh, we could do worse than turn to uh, our Minister of uh, Emergency Preparedness, uh, Bill Blair, uh, to respond to that. Bill. Yeah, thank you very much, Prime Minister, and, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, the, 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 RCM, or the, excuse me, the Ontario Ottawa Police Service remains the police of jurisdiction in the city of Ottawa. But the, the police services right across Canada and certainly in Ontario have been coming together. And they recently announced on Friday the, the formation of an integrated um, command structure for, the, for managing this event. Um, and that really brings the resources and the capacities of the OPP and the RCMP to the assistance of the Ottawa Police. Uh, we've also had conversations with other police agencies across Ontario, and, and they recognize the situation here and the importance of, of, of ensuring that there are adequate resources. But it's, it's not simply an issue of resources, but also of authorities. And we have been working from the very outset with, with the municipality and with the province in order to ensure that our police services here in Ottawa and right across Canada have the authorities they need and, and the resources they need to do the important job. Now, as I, as I said yesterday, policing is a very important institution in our society. We need the police to do their job of upholding our laws, to maintain the rule of law, and to maintain public order and safety in our communities. And we have a responsibility to make sure that they have the resources and the tools that they need to do that job. They have our support. And, and, and as, as that support uh, grows in, in the City of Ottawa, I have confidence that they'll be able to restore order with the support that we're providing. Next question. Hi, Prime Minister. Stephanie Taylor with the Canadian Press. You emphasized you were not calling in the military to deal with the situation, but all options, as you said last week, are on the table. So what would it take for you to bring the military into this situation? What would the criteria be, and, and what would it take for you to make that decision? Um, I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals right now. I think what is most important is that Canadians get their lives back, their communities back, their neighbourhoods back. Uh, and can once again rely on their jobs and the trade and the supply chains that uh, are supporting them and putting food on their tables. Uh, the reality is the measures that we put forward today, uh, which have been carefully thought through, uh, will give the tools to law enforcement uh, to be able to move uh, in uh, even uh, stronger and clearer ways uh, against these uh, illegal protests, these illegal occupations, uh, and blockades uh, that are hurting Canadians. Uh, we will continue uh, to monitor and we will continue to do the things necessary to keep Canadians safe. But like I said, uh, this Emergencies Act in no way uh, brings in uh, the military as a solution against Canadians. Uh, we are empowering law enforcement. I think that's what Canadians want to see. Uh, over the weekend, Minister Blair expressed uh, that he was a little baffled by the lack of law enforcement he saw. I want to know what you think. Do you agree with him that it is a little baffling the Ottawa police are not enforcing more of the laws? What do you make of the policing you have seen to date on Wellington Street and elsewhere in Ottawa? I think there, uh, there is a high level of frustration amongst uh, residents of Ottawa uh, that this situation has gone on as long as it has. Uh, certainly the uh, frustration people feel in Ottawa has been echoed across the country uh, and indeed around the world. Uh, and it is important that uh, the police of jurisdiction working with the OPP and the RCMP are able to put an end to these illegal protests. The specific and limited measures that we are putting forward today as part of the Emergencies Act will give them further tools that in their co coordinated response between the Ottawa Police Services, the OPP and the RCMP working together um, should be able to uh, respond to these concerns by the citizens of Ottawa who want their cities back. We'll take one last question in the foyer before turning to the phone. Yeah, uh, Prime Minister Ryan Templeton, National Post. Uh, over the weekend, Mayor Jim Watson here in Ottawa made a, a deal with protest organizers to move more trucks onto Wellington Street and out of residential areas. I'm wondering if you can give me any reaction to that deal. I know that the City of Ottawa, uh, its police services and its uh, elected officials have been uh, pursuing an end to these uh, blockades. Uh, this has gone on far too long. It is no longer a lawful protest. Uh, at a disagreement over government policy. It is now uh, an illegal occupation. It is time for people to go home. The measures that we've put forward today 
uh, will be additional tools for law enforcement at all levels uh, to be able to uh, secure an end to these blockades. You're announcing today rules around preventing banks from dealing with these illegal blockades. The city of Ottawa has dealt with these legal blockades. Don't you find that problematic that they have cut a deal to put more trucks directly in front of Parliament Hill? Um, we are working uh, in a concerted way uh, on measures that uh, will hopefully uh, restore order to the city of Ottawa and allow residents to get back to their lives. The measures that we put forward today around uh, empowering banks uh, to follow up and, and to uh, ensure that funds are not used for illegal activities such as blockades uh, will be significantly helpful uh, in, um, in reducing the size and impact of these blockades. Merci. On va maintenant tourner au téléphone. Thank you. We will now move to the telephone. Operator, go ahead. Please press star 1 at this time if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. The first question will be from, la première question va être de Raymond Fillon, TVA. Please go ahead. The first question is from TVA. Raymond Fillon, please go ahead. Thank you. Prime Minister, when will the special powers under the Emergencies Act uh, come into effect for police officers that you've announced today? Answer. The impact of this uh, declaration is immediate. We will be developing specific proposals and policies in the coming hours, the coming days, that will have specific impacts. But I will ask the Minister of Justice to tell you more. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Fillon. We will be tabling orders in Council under the Act, once the other measures, once these measures have been announced, they are, they become effective immediately. And then there will be parliamentary review, but the orders and decrees come into effect immediately. Thank you. Question. Mr. Trudeau, Several people reproached you for your tone towards the protesters over the last couple of weeks. They said you threw oil on the flames. Uh, do you feel any responsibility for the scope that these protests have reached? Answer. What we've seen and what we are now seeing across Canada is that, of course, people are tired, frustrated, sick of the pandemic, tired of public health measures. They want it to be over. Everyone agrees on that. But what we have also seen is that Canadians across the country were there for each other, were there to help one another, to follow public health guidelines, to get vaccinated at a higher rate than most in, in most of our peer countries across the world. We have shown as a country that people continue to be there for one another. Now, people who are seeing their lives disrupted by these blockades here in Ottawa, are seeing people suffering because borders are being blockaded that are providing people uh, that are preventing people from doing their jobs and are curtailing our supply chains. Those people are angry and even sicker of that. They want us to act to restore order in our country, to show that we are a country of rule of law. Well, yes, we do in this country encourage peaceful protests. We encourage people to openly and loudly express their opinions, but we do not accept people who come and curtail other people's freedoms, their fellow citizens' freedoms, and break the laws and have illegal, use illegal means to protest. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from La prochaine question est de Tonda McCharles, Toronto Star. Please go ahead. À vous la parole. Uh, thank you. Um, Prime Minister, I didn't hear um, an answer about the, to the question Mac asked about reinforcements from the RCMP to the city of Ottawa. And if you can answer that, great. But uh, how specifically do you justify giving even more powers to police 
in Ottawa when many residents and policing experts say the law enforcement here has not used the power they already have under existing laws, that this is a failure of policing leadership, not the need for more power. There will be time later to reflect on all the lessons that can be learned from this situation. Right now, we are ensuring uh, that local police of jurisdiction have both the legal authorities that they need uh, to uh, do their jobs, but also the extra resources. We have uh, delivered uh, not just uh, RCMP officers, as the OPP has delivered OPP officers uh, to support the City of Ottawa, uh, but we've also provided integrated planning and coordination task force to ensure uh, that uh, we are able to actually see an end to this occupation of Ottawa. Following up? Um, yes, I'd like you to speak if you could. You mentioned, as did Minister Freeland, um, the reputational damage to the country that you feel the border protests have had and the um, impact on Canada's I guess, reputation as a reliable trading partner. But can you speak a little bit more about just what was the tipping point for you in all of this? Was it really the fact that the White House has been weighing in and burning up the phone lines all weekend to all your ministers? Really, why have you moved to do this? Uh, for me, the conversations I had with our Windsor MP, Eric Kasmerchik, who was talking about uh, the impact of the disruption of the Ambassador Bridge uh, almost as soon as it started happening the impact on uh, workers in the auto sector in the Windsor area and up the supply chain through southern Ontario. Uh, the direct impact hurting exactly the people that uh, these uh, convoy protesters are purporting to represent. Regular Canadians are hurting in their jobs, in our economic recovery, in their freedoms to travel, to see friends and loved ones on the other side of the border, because of illegal protests and barricades. We have been there to support local police of jurisdiction, and we are now putting forward fresh tools to do that. In terms of the reputational damage, in my conversations with fellow leaders around the world on the situation in Ukraine and others, um, it has been clear that this is something that democracies around the world are concerned with. Countries that did well during the pandemic with high vaccination rates and strong public health measures are still seeing backlashes against those measures and uh, frustration by people who are tired of this pandemic. And the impact of uh, social media and uh, illicit funding of concerted activities designed to destabilize a country that has the highest vaccination rate of many of our peer countries, Canada, uh, around an issue that is not dividing Canadians. Canadians are united in having been there for each other through this pandemic, and they're even united in being sick and tired of this pandemic. But the way to get through it is not to shut down our economy and hurt our neighbors. And that's something that um, people understand around the world. And with this measure here today showing that Canada remains a country of the rule of law, that will protect its critical infrastructure, that will support the good jobs, uh, that deliver, uh, deliver goods and services, not just to Canadians, to people around the world, are going to be protected. Operatrice, prochain question, téléphone. Operator, next question, please. Merci. The next question is from La prochaine question est de Boris Prou, Le Devoir. The next question is from Le Devoir. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. What proof do you have that provincial capacities are not sufficient to deal with this situation? Answer. I'm very pleased to hand the floor to Minister Lametti to answer that question. Minister Lametti. Thank you for the question, Boris. Obviously, the answer can be found across Canada. And the answer can also be found in the measures we're going to be taking. 
of course, we're going to support police services across the country and provide them resources that they need. But I would direct your attention. I would direct your attention to uh, measures announced by the deputy prime, uh, deputy prime minister and minister of finance today. It's the ability to block the use of private property, such as trucks, which, and if you look at the flags that you're seeing across uh, Wellington Street, you can see several different flags with Canadian, Albertan, Quebec flags. That These trucks are registered across Canada. And I thank Mr. Ford for having taken measures in Ontario. But what we've done today will allow us either uh, to do something here in Ottawa or at the borders or elsewhere or through our financial services in Canada it will help us unblock the streets how? because this applies across Canada and under such measures under such an act we can do so we cannot do so through provincial legislation Follow-up question? Yes. Minister, what if a province does not want you to apply these measures in their province? May, can they ask to be excluded from them? Answer, no, under the Act. And in fact, the Act was drafted by Mr. Mulroney's Conservatives in 1988. We have the duty to consult provinces, which we did. Of course, we will continue to collaborate with provinces which we have done and we will continue to do. But once a national emergency has been declared, these measures apply across the whole country. One last question on the telephone. Thank you. Merci. Just for a quick follow-up. Obviously, these rules apply across Canada. But the tools that we are offering, the measures we will use will not be applied across the entire country. They will only be applied where they are truly necessary by working with local jurisdictions. So even though theoretically, yes, the impact, since it is a federal act, will apply, would apply across the whole country, it will only have a concrete impact where it is truly needed. And that is not everywhere in Canada, of course. Operator. The next question is from La Dernière Question est de Marie K. Walsh, The Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. À vous la parole. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Uh, Minister Lametti, if I understood him, said that this will apply across Canada and that provinces will not be able to opt out. Your opening statement said that this would be geographically targeted. So can you please explain where specifically in Canada this will apply? I, I uh, actually just answered that in French, and I'm happy to repeat it because it is an important point that people need to understand. The Emergency Measures Act, as it is uh, applied when it is a national emergency that touches more than one province, as this one is, necessarily covers the entire country because it is a federal national emergencies act. However, the specific provisions that we have laid out in the Act, the measures necessary, will only apply where they are needed. We talked about geographically limited, obviously, uh, to con continue to ensure that the Ambassador Bridge remains free and clear for traffic. That is a place where uh, the measures brought in by this Emergencies Act will matter. Uh, a small community elsewhere in the country, a long way from borders or critical infrastructure that is not experiencing uh, any uh, you know, significant illegal protests, are unlikely to see any impact from these uh, uh, emergency, uh, the Emergency Act. This, this is the element that is limited to where it is needed. And indeed, in places where there is a significant border crossing, where the local police of jurisdiction have no need of additional RCMP support or even the additional tools that we have made available to them, 
they will not have to use those additional tools. So even though the Emergencies Act applies to the entire country, it is targeted, time limited, and geographically specific based on need as to where it will actually be felt and have an impact on the ground. Following up. Thank you. So can you please clarify then, will it apply in Emerson, Manitoba, Coots, Alberta, and Surrey, BC? And how will you measure the success of this, that this is not just your government appearing to do something, but that actual results happen? Well, I think Canadians know well that the measure of success will be can we get our supply chains back? Can we uh, get uh, end the disruption to livelihoods of people who rely on trade to the United States from these border crossings? Can the citizens of Ottawa get back to uh, their daily lives, including, as we saw just a few weeks ago, uh, when a perfectly peaceful protest involving tractors and trucks of potatoes from PEI were on Parliament Hill highlighting their concerns. That is how this country needs to work and how protests can and should unfold. But this illegal occupation needs to end and that is where uh, we have now given the specific tools necessary for that. In regards to uh, Emerson and Coots, one of the issues that we have seen is a challenge in uh, getting tow trucks to actually show up to uh, bring out, to, to move these large rigs. In, uh, in Windsor, uh, we relied on a generous partnership with the Americans uh, to be able to get tow trucks to move the big trucks. Um, now, with these measures that we've put in place, there will be an ability to compel, for just compensation, tow truck owners and operators to actually do the jobs for which they have contracts with various orders of government to keep highways and roads clear. This is an example of a specific tool that is now available to local police of jurisdiction in places all across the country if needed it will be to them to determine whether or not that is needed. Merci beaucoup. C'est ce qui m'a fait la conférence de presse d'aujourd'hui. Thank you. This brings today's press conference to an end. Thank you, everyone.